Hello and what is going on everyone, hope you're all doing well, it's Duoscape here and today I'm going to show you the upgrade order that I'd recommend you take when upgrading your magic gear in RuneScape 3. This is the final gear upgrade guide on the channel and if you haven't done so already, I'd heavily recommend checking out my ranged or melee version first. A few disclaimers to mention, the orders that I'm going to suggest may change depending on your experience with EOC combat and the content that you decide to do on your account. There are many items that are only effective at certain bosses and activities, making it nearly impossible to create an upgrade order that is perfect for everyone. This being said, this is my take on a well-rounded account upgrade order you should take on your account. Everything in this video is up for discussion, so please voice your opinions in the comment section down below if you do not agree with a specific order or upgrade. This allows newer players to follow the dialogue and have an array of opinions to base their upgrade orders around. As many of you guys are aware, Magic is the weakest combat style in the game, hence why it's the last one that I made. Ideally, I would have liked to have made this once it received a buff, but you guys have been requesting it, so I'm going to make it for you. If you are a newer player, I would seriously consider investing your time and efforts into another style, such as melee. This way, you can get a greater long-term return out of your investment in playing the game. That being said, this is the beauty of RuneScape 3. If you enjoy a specific style, or enjoy doing a certain boss, do what you enjoy. At the end of the day, it's a game and as long as you're having fun, that's what's important. This guide will assume that you're starting at tier 70 gear in the likes of Subjugation Robes, a Staff of Light, Polypore Staff or even a Sun Spear. These are all easily obtainable early on in your grind. The first upgrade I'd suggest unlocking is the Guffic Staff, which can be obtained by completing the Major Arena minigame in the Wilderness. This unlocks a switch which allows you to use the Claws of Guffic special attack which provides great damage for the Magic Combat style and applies an affinity debuff to your opponent. This is one of the few useful special attack weapons in the game for Magic and is ridiculously cheap at 80k to reclaim which is why I'd recommend obtaining this first. Now it's time to save up 18 mil and grab yourself a Cywear Wand and Avertis Book which will provide you tier 90 magic accuracy alongside tier 80 damage. The reason we are only obtaining the tier 80 offhand is because the scaling of offhand weapons make it so that they account for a lot less of your overall weapon damage. This is a huge upgrade from your Staff of Light or Sun Spear so do not hesitate to upgrade to these ASAP. Upgrade 3 is going to be obtaining some entry level weapon perks on your gear. As mentioned in my other guides, in many cases perking out your weapon is almost just as important as getting better weapons due to the massive damage increase that they actually give you. For now, I'd go for Equilibrium 4, which can be obtained by using 8 Time Worn Components, providing you a 5.3% damage increase at a cost of 750k. And pair this with Precise 6, which can be obtained using 9 Historic Components, providing a 9% damage increase at a cost of 1.8 million. Just as a side note, you can actually get Equilibrium with Ruthless 3 using the same combo on screen. However, this is significantly rarer, and it is really useful for Elite Dungeons and Slayer. However, this upgrade will cost you more and is not necessary at this point in the game. Also, if you do a lot of Slayer, you can pair Precise 6 with Genocidal for some bonus damage while on task. Next up, I'd suggest purchasing a Mazcap Ability Codex to unlock the Corruption Blast ability. This unlocks a basic ability which can be used every 15 seconds, applying a 5 hit bleed to your opponents that spread to surrounding enemies in an AoE fashion. Basic abilities are really important for magic as it does not have access to all of the strong basics that ranged and melee has. This will set you back about 45 to 50 million at current prices and is a must have for your account. Thanks to the release of Raksha and Elite Dungeons, the cost of Blaster Fusion Boots and Celestial Hand Wraps are ridiculously low, so you may as well invest a 5 mil to get both of them now. The gloves offer some decent stats, whilst the boots half the charge duration of Detonate, making it a really viable threshold ability to add to your rotation. These boots are a must have for anyone out there using magic, they are actually best in slot because of the amount of power that they add to the Detonate ability. To get you into good PVMing habits, I'm now going to recommend that you obtain a Planted Feet Switch. This increases the duration of your Sunshine and Death Swiftness ability by 25%, resulting in a 5.2% average damage increase. The reason that this is before any of your big upgrades is so that you can get into the habit of switching to a Planted Feet Switch every time you use your Sunshine ability, and also because it is really cheap at a cost of 5 million. I'd recommend putting this on a Sun Spear so that you can get the use of this for both ranged and magic as you can swap styles with a Sun Spear, or you could put it on a Crystal Wand if you want to use a cheaper item. This is made using two Cywear components. You also want to make sure that you're building the habit of equipping a Ring of Vigor and this switch every time you Sunshine to maximize your damage output. This may be daunting at first, but I can promise you that it'll be worth it in the long run. Now it's time to get your hands on some tier 90 weapons to open so many doors on your PVMing journey. I'd first recommend upgrading to a Seismic Wand as it is cheaper than an Oxious Staff. You will transfer your perks from your previous wand to this 
And then after this upgrade, you want to prioritize grabbing a Noxious Staff. It is important to have a Staff and a Wand and Orb so that you have access to both the Sonic Wave and Concentrated Blast abilities, which will enable you to put together some more efficient ability rotations in your PVMing journey. These will cost you 255 mil for the pair, and you will also want Precise 6 paired with Equilibrium 4 on your Staff. Also, if you wanted to start learning 4 Tick Auto Attacking now, then this is when I'd recommend doing so. If you do not opt to learn 4 Tick Auto Attacking, then Mage is even weaker than the other two combat styles, so please keep that in mind. Next up, we're going to look into the possible armor upgrades you can attain on your account. It's time to ditch the subjugation, and if you are looking more into your PVM, I'd recommend grabbing a set of Zerial Robes and using Ancient Warrior upgrade patches on them. This will create a tier 88 magic armor set which degrades the dust, costing you around 44.4 million GP. On the flip side, if you are more into your Slayer or dislike armor that degrades the dust, you can grab yourself a set of Anima Cora Seren armor, which provides tier 80 magic armor stats and can be repaired, costing you around 50 million GP. Once obtaining your armor, do not waste any time when it comes to perking it out. For 3.3 million GP, you can use 8 faceted components to create Enhanced Devoted 4. This offers an 18% chance to make your protection prayers 100% effective for 3 seconds, similar to the Devotion ability. This is a really nice upgrade and will help reduce the amount of damage that you take while PVMing, which will enable you to do even more damage and focus less on staying alive. Next up you want to grab Impatient 4. This can be obtained by using 6 Arrows components alongside 1 Zamorak component. This offers a 36% chance that your basic ability will gain you 3% more adrenaline and will help you build your ultimate and threshold abilities even faster and on average will cost you around 9.25 million GP at current prices. Crackling 4 and Relentless 5 is a combo attained using 8 vintage components and will take roughly 20 attempts on average, costing around 22.4 million GP. Crackling 4 will deal 200% weapon damage occasionally and has a 60 second cooldown. Relentless 5 offers a 5% chance that a threshold special attack or ultimate ability will not use any adrenaline with a 30 second cooldown. And finally you want some form of biting combo. For those of you unaware, biting increases your critical damage chance. You could go for biting 3 using 9 direct components, however this takes a relatively long time to get and I would recommend using 7 direct components with 2 dragon fire and settling on biting 2 dragon slayer for now. This will boost your damage to dragons by 7% which is great for ED2 and any other dragons in the game. The average amount of damage you'll have by having biting 2 is 2.533% which while not being the high 5% that biting 4 gives you will suffice for now and enable you to focus on some better, more important upgrades in the meanwhile. You could also pair Impatient 4 with Undead Slayer, Dragon Slayer or Demon Slayer. However, this will be significantly more expensive and should be done only later or unless you plan on camping a specific creature or boss for a long time. Next up, let's grab an Amulet of Souls. You can upgrade this later on to be the best in slot amulet in the game. And for now, it will make it so that your Soul Split heals 18.75% more HP on average. It also increases the damage mitigation offered by Protection Prayers to 60%, whilst providing decent stats and setting you back about 70 million GP. The next upgrade I'd suggest investing into is a set of Cinderbane Gloves. These offer a chance to apply poison damage to certain bosses and stack with weapon poison potions and incense sticks. Anywhere these work, these are the best in slot. For example, Solak, Elite Dungeons and Telos. They are also hybrid so you can use them for all three styles and these will set you back 81.1 million GP. If you are unlikely to do any content where these work, then do not obtain these yet and grab yourself a Death Touch bracelet or stick to the Celestial hand wraps. Now it's time to ditch the Virtus book so people will stop bullying you and to buy Seismic Singularity, which is a tier 90 offhand and will match your wand. Once again, swap your perks over to this weapon. And now that you have done this, it is time to grab a flanking switch. A flanking switch can be obtained by using 9 clockwork components. You will also want to drain your invention level down to 52 for the best chance to achieve this. You can lower your stats by standing in the snow outside the God Wars dungeon area. Blanking 4 makes it so that your impact and deep impact lose their stunning ability, but in turn gain greatly increased damage when used to the side or behind your opponent. You may want to obtain this earlier if you do a lot of group content, as in solo content it only has a few niches. Blanking will make impact become your strongest basic ability wherever you can use it and it is well worth obtaining. You'll also want to make sure you put your flanking switch on the Orbiter Cywear. For upgrade number 12, you want to save up 450 million GP and purchase yourself an Inquisitor's Staff. This is a game changer for magic and will be the best in slot magic weapon when used against melee based opponents such as Virago, Solak, Telos, just to name a few. Please note that this may only be effective at certain elements of a boss fight. For example, whilst being the best staff weapon against Solak, it will only be a tier 80 staff when used on the Elf. Now I wouldn't recommend using magic unless you do content that warrants using this staff, as if not it is seriously an underwhelming combat style. 
Also, depending on the content you do, you may want to keep your Noxious Staff to act as a Karomin Force Switch or to be used where the Inquisitors is not effective. Next, we have Greater Chain, and once again, this depends on the content you opt to do. Greater Chain is unlocked using a Greater Chain Ability Codex and will cost you 133 million GP at the moment. When used, the next ability will hit 50% of its damage to all of those that were hit by the initial chain. This stacks with Karomin Floor and will apply both hits of Wild Magic and up to all four hits of your Asphyxiate. However, please note you cannot swap targets when using this, because if you do, you will lose the buff. If you do not do any Slayer with Magic, or any bosses where you have to kill multiple targets, then you may want to skip this upgrade altogether for now. Also, you're going to want to grab Chromium 4 Equilibrium 2 by using 6 Shadow Components and 3 Time 1 Components. This will cost you on average 94.5 million GP, and if you do a lot of Slayer, Chromium 4 paired with Planted Feet is actually a great idea, and is made by using 6 Shadow Components and 3 Cyware Components costing around 63.6 million GP. Now is when I'd recommend upgrading to Biting 4, which can be obtained by using 7 Noxious Components, costing around 56.7 million GP. Please bear in mind that when you disassemble a Noxious Weapon for Noxious Components, it will cost you 160 million up front. However, this will provide 13 spare components which can be used later. If you wish to see all of the various combinations you can pair Biting 4 with, check out my range upgrade guide for them. This perk offers a 5.07% damage increase, which goes up to 5.5% once you hit item level 20. Time to purchase a Reaper Necklace and use your souls to upgrade to an Essence of Finality. This increases your overall hit chance by 3%. Provides 18.75% more increased heals when using Soul Split, and makes it so that your protection prayers offer a 60% damage reduction, whilst enabling the ability to store a special attack weapon. You will want to put your Guffic Staff inside this, which will make it so that you can use a tier 60 special attack with tier 90, 92 or 97 weapon damage. This upgrade will cost you 285 million. Next up is when I'd suggest upgrading to the tier 99 prayer, Affliction. This is extremely useful and will increase your mage attack, damage and defense by 12%, which when accuracy is considered, is up to a 4% damage increase depending on the boss. This will cost 725 mil and is a huge buff to any of the combat styles that you choose to use it on. After the prayer I'd suggest buying 2000 vital sparks to create the limitless ability, or you can just buy the codex in the grand exchange. This makes it so that you can use thresholds without the need of 50% adrenaline and last 6 seconds with a 90 second cooldown. This ability will benefit all 3 styles and will make it so that when you use your second sunshine rotation and don't have access to an adrenaline potion because it's on cooldown, you can deal a ton of extra damage and get more threshold abilities in. This will set you back 356 million and once again it works on all 3 styles so it's a great upgrade to grab. Now it's time to upgrade your tier 90 wand and orb to a tier 92 praisal wand and imperium core. These offer tier 92 weapon damage and accuracy, and this will set you back between 875 and 1.04 billion GP. This also unlocks the ability to use a tier 90 flanking switch, which we'll cover in a minute. Another great upgrade that you want to consider now is the Elite Tectonic, and it's actually pretty nice for magic as it is relatively cheap, it can be repaired and upkeeped pretty cost effectively when compared to the other alternatives. This also does not degrade in Elite Dungeons and is the best in slot magic armor as of 2021. And this will set you back 350 million GP. And if you do a ton of elite dungeons, it's definitely worth obtaining if you're going to opt to use magic. Now it's time to talk about Aftershock. This is a massive question mark for many mid-tier players as it can be hard to see the benefit over Equilibrium 4, especially when considering the massive price difference. Aftershock is a perk which applies an AoE explosion every time you deal 50,000 damage, hitting on average 127.2% ability damage to your opponents. Do not bother with just Aftershock 4, for this to be worth it you really need to pair it with Equilibrium 2. The combination is on screen and this can be obtained using 6 Aluna Junkin components paired with 3 Time 1. You want to put this on your offhand and two handed staff. This will cost you on average 163 million per giz. To maintain these stacks you also want to make sure you have Aftershock 1 paired with Precise 6 on your main hand wand. This enables it so that you can still have Aftershock when equipping a shield or using a flanking switch and can be obtained by using 2 Eluna Junkin components and 7 Armadil components costing on average 46.6 million GP. Now it's time to ditch the Cyware Orb flanking switch and upgrade to a tier 9E. In order to do this you want to swap your flanking 4 over to a Seismic Singularity for higher flank damage and this will cost you on average 191 million GP. Now here's an upgrade to confuse many newer players. You want to get a Seren God Bow and Ingenuity of the Humans. You're probably thinking, why would I purchase a Seren God Bow for my magic setup when it's a ranged weapon, right? Well, the harsh reality is that this is actually a substantial upgrade for all three of the combat styles. 
and it allows you to use a crystal rain special attack every 90 seconds and i'd recommend only grabbing this if you're going to be killing bosses that are larger than a three by three such as yakamari virago and telos just to name a few you can look on the wiki to see all of the bosses that this is worth using at. It will tell you the exact amount of damage it does on average per hit. You have to pair this with the Ingenuity of the Humans ability, as this allows your next hit to be a guaranteed hit. And without using this for the Serengo Bow, using all of your magic gear, it's just going to splash. So you definitely want to make sure you have both of these paired together. For more of an in-depth explanation of this weapon, check out the range guide. Oh yeah, and the fun doesn't end here. If your opponent isn't a 3x3, don't think you've got away with using a really weird weapon for magic. It's actually worth using a trimmed masterwork spear with your ingenuity to humans as well to occasionally bleed a dismember every 90 seconds. And this is actually pretty good and it's another prime example of how lacking the magic style is and the final upgrade that i'd recommend you get in kind of is the staff of sliske this literally used to be the king of weapons in the game and now it's pretty much been burnt to the ground because of the inquisitor's staff the other combat styles being extremely strong and the nerf of continuous four tick auto attacking unlike the other telos weapons the special attack is pretty much useless on this weapon and the weapon is only better than the inquisitors at a handful of places so you probably won't even need to grab this and this will set you back 690 million GP. As an honourable mention, I'd like to point out the new Channeler's Ring. It's actually a pretty good ring for magic, but the issue is you either have to bring an extra switch or give up your Ring of Death, Vigor or Asylums in order to use this. If I was to suggest it anywhere in this order, it would probably be right after you get a tier 90 weapon and your armor upgrades. But like I said, I don't really know where to put this as there's so many opportunity costs when it comes to ring upgrades. Thank you everyone for making it to the end of the video and I hope this helps clear up some of the confusion when it comes to how you should opt to upgrade your magic gear. These videos take a ton of time, thought and discussion to put together so if you found it useful please drop a like and feel free to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any future uploads. Speaking of which our From Scratch series has just launched so if you want to follow me on a journey to making riches make sure to jump along for the ride. And as always, all of your feedback's so appreciated in the comment section down below to help improve the channel and content to give you guys the best overall viewing experience. So please voice your opinions and let me know anything I can improve. Thank you all for watching.